Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, it's officially October. It's time to bundle up in a sweater, head out to a pumpkin patch, maybe put on a costume and sip a cocktail that looks like it's made out of blood or a coffee drink with a perfectly crackled leaf on top. There is just so much to choose from this month. So we're sharing some of our favorite ways to enjoy it all. And do not worry, we have got recommendations for the Halloween fanatics and for the scaredy cats. It's Tuesday, October 1st. I'm Megan Harris, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. I'm here with executive producer Mallory Falk. Hello. Hi. And producer Sophia Lowe. Hey there. Hey, uh, before we jump into today's conversation, we wanted to take a moment and welcome any new listeners to our show and also talk just a teeny bit about our mission here at CityCast Pittsburgh, because it's our goal every day to bring you the most compelling stories, the most exciting people, and of course, the best insider recommendations so that you can make the most of your city and also hopefully make the city a little bit better too. Yeah, I love that so much, Megan. We have such a unique job in producing a daily podcast and newsletter. And I think it's something we all really love because of how much we just love Pittsburgh and being Mm -hmm. in the city. And since our fall membership campaign is happening this week, I think it's a really good time to remind people why we do all of this, but also how we do this podcast and newsletter. (laughs) Uh, This work wouldn't be possible without the support of our members. 1,000%. Uh, If you are interested, go to membership.citycast.fm. Membership is so important because honestly, producing a daily podcast and newsletter that is dedicated to Pittsburgh, it really takes a lot of work behind the scenes. So much. (laughs) You know, we're researching, interviewing, editing, all of it. This is a small team of four bringing this to you every day. So your membership not only keeps us in business, it helps us grow and evolve to better serve you, our listeners, because at the end of the day, that's what this is all about, helping all of you feel more connected to Pittsburgh. Totally. So if you ever feel like you've gotten something valuable from CityCast Pittsburgh, like a new perspective on a local issue or a really great weekend recommendation, please become a member today. Your support is what keeps us going. It means so much to us. I love seeing the little Slack notification go off when we get new members. It's like the happiest ding. It's a little gift every time. Yeah, uh, we actually get to see what Yen's write to us, and we really, really appreciate it. Um, You can join yourself and add a little message to us right now by heading to membership.citycast.fm. Again, that's membership.citycast.fm. And thank you so much to all of our current members and to anyone who's thinking about joining us. We really wouldn't be here without you. Absolutely. Um, So let's jump into today's guide to October. Uh, I want to know what are each of you going to be looking forward to this month? Uh, Mallory, let's start with you. So I'm kicking things off with maybe the most classic fall event, which is pumpkin picking. There are so many great spots to get pumpkins around here. We've got a pretty comprehensive list on our website, pittsburgh.citycast.fm, but wanted to shout out a few here on the pod. So, of course, Sorgles in Wexford. Um, It's where I went on field trips as a child. It's where I go to this day. And I really think the apple cider donuts there alone are worth the trip. Even if Mm -hmm. you don't grab a pumpkin, get those donuts. I had them for the first time this weekend. So good. I also made my own apple caramel from apples I picked there. Put that on the donut. Sophia, I'm glad for this recommendation because I was waiting to see if you thought they lived up to the hype because I love Mm -hmm. them. But you have a very high threshold for treats. (laughs) Well, there are plenty more spots for treats this season. Triple B in Monongahela has pumpkin, apple and flower picking. They've got a fall fest every weekend this month that includes hay rides, a corn maze, Something called a singing chicken show. I have not witnessed this in person. I cannot speak to what happens there, but I am super intrigued. I know Triple B has an animatronic bee that like tells you about, you know, the beehive and stuff. So now I'm kind of thinking, is it like real chickens and music or is it like animatronic chicken singing? Either way. Uh, Yeah, really. I'm, (laughs) I'm in. I'm in no matter what. Okay. If you don't want singing chickens, though, what else is there? (laughs) <laughs> so I also want to shout out Freedom Farms in Butler. They've also got a fall fest every weekend this month. That's got tractor rides, a corn maze, and pick your own sunflowers. And then, of course, lots of great pumpkins to choose from. Yeah. And then Freedom Farms also has that space uh, that they share with Grist House now. So they've got like the whole farmer's market vibe. And it's it's just it feels very fall fest right now. It's a good time. 
Nice. Uh, I will keep it thematic, I guess. Uh, so someone told me recently that they have a lot of uh, October and November birthdays in their family. And one of their matriarchs told them when they were little that the leaves change in honor of their birthdays, that that's like the mother nature saying happy birthday to them. I would eat that up as a kid. <laughs> Same. I thought it was the cutest thing. Uh, and now that I have a little person who also has a fall birthday, I cannot wait to repeat this. Um, <laughs> but I thought it Bear saying that Pennsylvania actually has a longer and more varied like fall foliage season than anywhere else, at least for now. Climate change, I hope it doesn't take that away from us. Um, but we can usually expect peak color around here like mid to late October. Totally depends on climate and other things. Um, but if you're interested in catching like leaf peeping, um, I highly recommend uh, the DCNR, the state uh, organization's color map. Ooh. So they keep tabs on all 67 Pennsylvania counties and when they're in peak color and how they're changing from week to week. Um, newsletter editor Francesca DeBecco just did a fun little story about also why we don't need to be raking our leaves here in the city of Pittsburgh this season. So I won't spoil it, but that's fun. And she's got a link to that map in there. Um, but as for experiencing all the fall color, uh, I think it's really hard to go wrong anywhere in town just we yeah. have such beautiful tree canopy here in the city um, but if the leaves have not popped yet where you are as you're hearing this um, try driving a few miles north if you can um, like when it starts to like a little bit of orange tinge in Pittsburgh often it is starting to really peak in like Lawrence County just north of the city mm. um, so like McConnell's Mill for example State Park is one of my all time favorites to That's hike a great when one. the leaves are really changing and it's got that cute little covered bridge oh it's so good. It's just the most iconic fall scene there. It, it really is. Um, but Ohio Pile is great, too. If once, you know, Westmoreland County starts to go, really check that map because it can, you can find such great stuff all over the state. I do my leaf peeping just here in the city in Frick Park. I like to start um, kind of where like the Frick Environmental Center is and just start mm -hmm. going down the ravine. And then I don't remember the exact trails you take, but I'm sure it's on, you know, Frick parks map uh there's like this little path that takes you kind of like over the hills and you end up near brewsters so <laughs> i get my treat after my walk yeah, I also love Allegheny Commons um, in the north side, uh, which puts you like right there by Western Avenue. So lots of fun treats there, too, if that's if that's what you're in for. Totally. Well, I will start to bring the Halloween vibes into October uh, by talking about all of the haunted tours and attractions you can do. I'll go from scariest to like kid friendly spooks. So unfortunately, Scare House's main attraction is closed this year, but they have a few sort of like spinoff events and haunts. Mm -hmm. One of them is the basement, which is like their very high thrills one, 18 plus, you need to sign a waiver, high voltage effects, complete darkness, <laughs> tight spaces. Anything you've got to sign a waiver for makes me a little nervous. Like, is the chainsaw going to get a little too close for comfort? <laughs> well, and I think that that bears like the most important part of the basement is that it's also a contact haunt, which means that the actors can touch you. Yeah. Megan, you've been before, right? Yeah, they've been doing this as like kind of their side hustle for a long, long time. Um, I went, I think the very first time they had it, and I've been a few times since like for themed ones. Like I think I went to a Valentine's Day one once. Um, Interesting. <laughs> I, I do think you, it benefits to be a certain type of person. I don't like scary movies, for example. I won't watch them because the anxiety like freaks me out. But I love haunted houses because I get so like... I don't know, taken in by like the artistry of it all. Like I just find them so detailed and the actors are always so into it. I don't know. I just I think I'm a very specific type of client. But the basement, I think, is always fun. They do a great job with it. It is a true art form. Honestly. Unfortunately, I do not like people getting too close to me and touching me, especially in the dark. So <laughs> not for me. But if this is for you, tickets are about $33 and the basement's open Wednesdays through Sundays. On the website, it also said like this is the last time they're doing the basement, Aww. I guess, at least for now. So if this is something that gets you really excited, definitely go this year. Uh, well, what else? Uh, you said you're, you're ranking them from scariest to least scariest. What's what's lesser scary? 
Okay, so for middle scary, <laughs> uh, I have Fright Farm in Smithfield, Pennsylvania. So it's been up in Fayette County for more than 30 years. So they do all sorts of different things. Also kind of, it sounds like varying levels of scary. So there's like the Hayride of No Return. And then there's Hollow Ground Cemetery where Victorian souls don't want to stay dead in their graves. <laughs> there's the Shallow Wharf. So abandoned wharf filled with fog, mist, uh, and fishermen and sailor spirits haunting the air. Area, and then Slaughter Hollow. Nope. Mallory, here's your chainsaw moment. No, I don't. I want to avoid the chainsaw moment. <laughs> well, there's a whole family there who really love their chainsaws. But I guess from this, you're starting to get the, you know, high thrills and also just, you know, classic cemetery stuff. I would rather just stroll through the fog and mist, to be honest. <laughs> yes, there's something for everyone. Medium scary. Um, and prices vary depending on the day, but generally, like, think $25 to $40. Okay, so if that's medium scary, for anyone who just, you know, doesn't even want to hear a chainsaw far in the distance, what do you have for us? <laughs> okay, so this is stuff that you can do if you're a scaredy cat adult, acceptable, or you can bring your kids with you. Um, so they have Hobgoblin Hikes in Westmoreland County's parks. So this is recommended for ages eight and up. So these are half mile hikes, not too long, but you'll pass a lot of ghosts, goblins, and other creatures. So uh, there's one in Northmoreland Park on October 12th from 7 to 9 p.m. And then another one on October 19th. Uh, that's also 7 to 9 p.m. at Mammoth Park. Uh, and all of these are free too. So that's Ooh. really fun. Yeah, I'll also throw in the Boo Barn because I've heard such good things about it. It's over Yeah, that's in... a cute name. I know. It's uh, It's got like 15 spooky rooms, but they're supposed to be good for kids. Like, especially if you're like, you like creepy stuff as an adult and you want to introduce your kid in a safe fish way. This is a nice way to do it. And then there's also Hollow Boo at Idlewild. So that includes trick-or-treating every day down a trail through the Storybrook Forest. Also oh, a cute. place where you can do some good leaf peeping. And then, you know, Phantom Fest at Kennywood's pretty family friendly during the day. And then, of course, gets spookier at night. And, you know, you can find more haunted attractions for all fear levels on our website. That's pittsburgh.citycast.fm. So let's move on to some food and drink recommendations for the month of October. What are y'all most looking forward to? So if you've listened to the show before, you know that I'm a Paige's Dairy Mart fangirl. I mean, who doesn't love eating ice cream under a bridge? So I am going to recommend their limited time fall menu. A drippy bridge. I feel like it really adds to the ambiance this yeah. time of year. Yeah, exactly. I am obsessed with their fall menu. Uh, off the top of my head from last year, fall market shake, yum, apple cider, vanilla ice cream, caramel, and the pumpkin roll Arctic swirl. Also chef's kiss because it's like two desserts in one. You get your pumpkin roll on top of your ice cream. I mean, isn't that how all Paige's orders are? It's like two to four desserts in one. It's great when you can't choose. So I can personally vouch for the hot apple dumpling sundae, again, two desserts in one. Um, but there are so many good options this year. There's an apple cider float, something called autumn morning Arctic swirl, which is maple ice cream topped with warm pieces of waffle. My pro tip is you could ask them to add more things to the Arctic swirl. I think that would be really good with like marshmallow topping or something. Mm -hmm. I also learned you can ask to sub in a different ice cream flavor. Like last time around, there was something that sounded great, but with just vanilla ice cream and I was able to sub in pumpkin. Ooh. Um, but my other pro tip would be that right now, Pages is scheduled to close for the season on October 17th. But there is a warning on their website saying the date is subject to change without notice. So if you really want that apple butter soft serve, I would suggest going sooner rather than later to make sure you can try all their treats. Classic. I feel like pages would not be pages without the like, like threat of sudden closure, just in yeah. case. <laughs> That's the real horror. <laughs> so true. Well, if you want something, you can get all throughout October. There are so many Halloween drinks and tons of like little pop ups or Halloween themed bars. Mm -hmm. So the Witching Hour pop up at Wiggle Whiskey in the Strip opens up on October 5th. I'm super excited for this. I think I definitely want to go to like a bunch of witchy themed bars on Wednesdays before uh, Agatha All Along drops oh, at 9 yeah. p.m. Uh, <laughs> oh, a great pairing. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Jekyll and Hyde in the South Side. They have a lot of themed cocktails and themed shots. I think the true blood shot sounds really good. It's Smirnoff whipped vodka and cherry schnapps. Oh, that Pass. sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> 
Sophia, I think you and I have different drink orders. <laughs> it just sounds like sugar. <laughs> That's exactly. true. I forget you like your cocktails to be like just like childlike and delicious. Yeah, I don't drink like a grown up, um, but they have really <laughs> great deals any day of the week. There's free pool on Mondays, karaoke on Thursdays, DJ nights on Friday and Saturday. So more to do than just drink. Fair. I just really want a cocktail with like a creepy eyeball floating inside. That's what I mean. What more could a girl want? <laughs> <laughs> and then Scarehouse is actually doing their own bar type event. So this is called the Chipped Fang, which is a secret vampire lair in the Strip District. Uh, so you do need to buy tickets for this. You can't just walk in. Tickets are about thirty-two dollars. This Whoa. also runs from Wednesday to Sundays. Uh, it does include three mocktails. Um, and then, you know, there's still that interactive element. Um, there's stuff to do. You can chat with the actors. Sorry, the vampires. <laughs> well, there's another interactive bar I'm really excited about. Um, it's probably no surprise that I'm a fan of The Nightmare Before Christmas since I have a dog named after the ghost dog in that movie. Um, so I'm very excited to check out Nightmare Before Mixtape. So all month, Mixtape and Garfield, it's being transformed into this immersive experience where you feel like you're inside of that movie. The photos of it just look incredible. They really seem like they went all out. Yeah, there's like a giant glowing green oogie boogie that I spotted in those photos, among other things. Uh, so, you know, all month mixtape will be having its usual events. But if you buy tickets specifically to the Nightmare Before mixtape, then you get this special experience where the hosts are in character. Um, there are activities where you can win prizes. And then you'll have full access to a spooky cocktail and mocktail menu and you get a complimentary welcome drink. So this kicks off on October 2nd. I cannot wait to check it out. Do you think they'll have a zero there? They better. <laughs> <laughs> if not, you could just bring yours. Um, a couple other non-Halloween-y festivals just to kind of put on your radar. So the Coffee and Chocolate Festival is coming up on October 26th. Uh, it's at the Monroeville Convention Center, which is back and thriving. Uh, happening from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. for $35. You can choose between two sessions. Uh, you get an espresso cup, like a little commemorative cup. Uh, and Aww. then there's a ton of samples. So coffee, chocolate, wines spirits and it says also unlimited trips to the always flowing chocolate fountain with accompaniments i do not trust a flowing chocolate fountain at a convention center that is too many germs swirling around in there but god bless whoever goes for it i don't know i kind of want to see it in action like i'm not i'm not saying yes but i'm not saying no i hope it's really big same. Yeah. Um, and then another one, Pittsburgh Coffee Week. So a little earlier in the month, that's October 13th through 19th. Um, there are so many people that get involved with this, at least 13 different shops and collabs that I saw in their events listing. Um, there's classes, there's tastings. They have an opportunity for baristas this year uh, who are also artists to showcase their work. I thought that was really fun. Um, and then some cool contests. So there's one for latte art uh, and one for cocktails. Um, plus, they have a bunch of pour over samples one day. Uh, so the prices and locations all vary. Some of it's free. Just so much cool stuff to check out. And even if you can't make it to a Coffee Week event, I think it's very much worth checking out the specialty drinks that individual shops feature. So all of those are listed on Coffee Week's website. There are so many ones that look yummy. Lots of fall ones. Give me one, Sophia. What's what's the one? I know you have a favorite already. Um, there's this uh, new place that opened up in like sort of Lawrenceville area called Happenstance, and they're doing a vanilla cold foam dirty chai. Okay. Um, so I think that's probably on my list. Uh, and then there's like specials with maple cold foam. There's a white chocolate Ooh. churro mocha. So lots of stuff. Um, I actually don't like my coffee as sweet as my cocktails. So I know TBD it, on what I'm going to buy, but yeah, you like nuance for one and absolutely zero nuance for the other. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Last up, some fun events coming up to just mark your October calendar for. So since we've been very Halloween focused, I'll bring in an event that is not spooky. It is actually very adventure and outdoorsy. Uh, it's No Man's Land Film Festival. That's going to be on October 11th from 6 to 10 p.m. Uh, it's going to be at Vellum Fermentation on the south side. And it's also being hosted by Venture Outdoors. And it's a chance to meet their new executive director, too, that they just brought on board. Um, they have a really cool resume. So that'll be fun. 
Yeah. So this whole film festival's focus is on like community building and highlighting women and gender nonconforming athletes and filmmakers. So all of these are like true stories of people who are really making an impact in the outdoor space. So I think that's just going to be really cool. Bring your own camping chair, too. I love that. That sounds great. I am going to bring us back into Halloween territory. I hope that's all right. (laughs) So this is my recommendation for anyone who's feeling a little ambitious this year and wants to make their own Halloween costume. Prototype is hosting two costume co-working events at their new space in Sharpsburg. So it's basically this open studio time where you can bring your costume and work on it with guidance from Sally Louise, who is described as a skilled sewer and mixed media artist who has lots of experience making weird garments. I'm so glad this is making a costume. I heard this and I thought you were like co-working in costume. And I was thinking like, (laughs) that sounds awful. (laughs) Or or kind of the greatest. I love wearing a onesie anyway. And like wearing a onesie to work just sounds even more fun. A onesie at work is one thing, but I'm thinking of like a really elaborate costume and I'm just sitting down at my computer. No, thanks. (laughs) Also, then there would just be so much glitter to clean up in the workspace. (laughs) What kind of costumes are y'all wearing? (laughs) I don't know. I feel like anytime I've gone out in costume, like I'm leaving little strands of wigs in my wake. I don't know if anyone wants that in like a professional co-working space. I don't know. Makes the day more interesting. Anyway, so this is $10 per person, but the event says that no one will be turned away for lack of funds. So if that entry fee is too high for you, you can reach out to them. You know, I have pretty limited sewing skills. I'm more of a hot glue gun girl, but the invite says to bring your costume to work on regardless of your sewing or making ability. So this sounds pretty approachable. If I get it together to make a costume this year, I'm definitely going to check this out. There are two sessions to choose from. They are both on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. So there's one on October 16th and one on October 23rd. So I'm going to throw it back to my wilder years uh, and mention a few Halloween parties that are coming up in town. Um, So one of my all-time favorites is WYEP's Hellbender Ball. Um, So they have local artists. They encourage costumes. It's always a fun time. Um, That one's going down on October 19th. Uh, Phipps is doing a couple of things. So they've got their House of Haunts um, where they're going to have all kinds of fun stuff. That one's their adult party. So that's October 11th. And then they've got a kid-friendly one called Halloween Happenings. On October 25th, um, Spirit is doing their annual party, Halloween party, on October 26th. You can always expect a good time over there. Um, And then there's one called the Monsters Ball that's going to be at Social House on October 26th. And y'all, they are given big prizes for their Halloween costume contest. It's like $300 for individual and $500 for couples (gasps) costumes. So go to co-working and make a really good costume. (laughs) I know. And the photos they have from previous years really are kind of impressive. And then another Halloween party I'm looking forward to is the Haunted Museum After Dark. So this is at the Natural History Museum, also for adults, 21 plus. Uh, That's going to be on October 18th. And then if you're looking for something a little more child-friendly during the day, there is Halloween at the National Aviary. So this is um, on weekends, October 19th, 20th, 26th, and 27th. It's just included with general admission if you go that day. So there is a spooky, (laughs) I hope I did them justice there, a spooky meet and greet with the owls. Um, And then you get to learn about what makes each owl unique from a National Aviary expert. And then, you know, kids can get Halloween treats at various activities throughout their visit and wear a costume and be part of a Halloween parade at the National Aviary. So if you're one of those people who is into owls and not terrified by them, like this, me. Yeah, this <laughs> this might be the place to go. Owls are great. I love the aviary owls. They're so cute. Oh, they're so cute. But owls do terrify me in the wild. Uh, I'll keep it kid themed, too. Um, The zoo has a couple of events. So they're doing their annual zoo boo. So that's their daytime trick or treat experience. That'll be Saturdays and Sundays. So they're doing it October 19th through 27th, um, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that's free with your ticket or if you have a membership or something. Um, And then they have a separate experience. That's their jack-o'-lantern extravaganza. Uh, I was there the other day day and they were setting up for this and like putting all the pumpkins and the trees. I can't believe how high up they get them. So it kicks off this week. So October 3rd through November 3rd, that'll be from 630 to 1030 p.m. It is a separate ticket from, you know, any zoo entrance that you have, but there is a discount with membership. They recommend it's best after sunset, um, but it says you get to see thousands of artistically carved pumpkins and just the teeny preview I got seeing them set up like they're not kidding. Those 
things are wild. Yeah. And I imagine it's best after sunset because then you get to see them lit up and really get to like appreciate all the artistry. Yeah, all glowing. Well, if you want to paint your own pumpkin, you can do that at a community campfire at Frick Park. That's on Saturday, October 19th from 4 to 7. So they will have the fire running and sticks. So all you need to do is bring your own s'mores ingredients or I guess like anything else you want to roast. Doesn't have to be s'mores. Bring something (laughs) savory if that's your jam. Um, Besides pumpkin painting, there's going to be live music, lawn games, uh, another family friendly activity just you do need to register in advance it's five dollar tickets for adults and children four and older and if you've got a little toddler they can get in for free a little toddler um and then mount lebanon cemetery they're doing their uh slideshow tour so that's going to be saturday october 26th it's always run by the neighborhood historical society um important to note not an actual walking tour but you do get a ton of information and history about some of the big sites there in the mount lebo cemetery um, and then you get to take home a map with all of those spots so you can kind of check them out at your own leisure I love wandering in cemeteries. I wander around in the Allegheny Cemetery a lot, but I just learned that they have uh, self-guided tours. Uh, You can download an app, actually, and then you can get the map. They'll guide you to all the graves, and it's kind of like choose your own adventure, what you want to see. So I think that's pretty cool, too. Yeah, and Homewood Cemetery always has interesting ones, like one-off events. Um, Definitely worth always checking their calendar and see if they have any that are coming up that fit your interest. Homewood Cemetery is also a great spot to catch the fall foliage, so bringing it full circle. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. Reminder, members of CityCast Pittsburgh got a fresh email in their inbox with all kinds of special events to help them plan their week. So if you become a member, you're going to start getting those emails too. Plus, you will get pod listening with no ads. Get all the details at membership.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Talk to you soon. Off the top of your head, Sophia, you did <laughs> that was off the top of your head. I remember the food I really like. <laughs>